Hello and welcome again to another episode of the Short Chef. Um, so called because I wear the shorts, not because I am just slightly under six foot. Okay, so today we're going to do a microwave sponge pudding, and today we have Clive doing the camera work as, as always. And today we also have our little kitchen assistant, uh, Bitey. Bitey is so called because she used to have another name until about an hour ago when I started doing this and uh, Clive picked her up to sort of uh, move her out of the way and she uh, gave him a little kiss with her teeth. Naughty bitey. Anyway, uh, shall we go and sing happy birthday? Yeah, I think we should. <clears throat> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Soap out. Nice hot soapy water. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And again, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right, nice one. Okay. Uh, cloth sponsored by. <coughs> My mother, there we are. Lovely. So, today we do have a shout out indeed to my baker, my mother, because she's the one who has passed this recipe down to me. And also, we're going to have a shout out again to the Two More Rally, brand new shirt, this one. Uh, if anybody has any shirts that they'd like me to wear, I'm quite happy to wear them if you could send them in. Uh, but we should have been in Burgos tonight. Uh, which is why I've got to get this down with this and sort of get it out of the way because uh, I'm virtually going to Burgos and uh, my little friend Rolf is going to do a quiz tonight for all the two ball rallies. Okay, so let's have a look at the ingredients. What we have here today is we have some nice free range eggs. We have some flour and baking powder mix. Normally you would use self raising flour, but you know what it's like with the flour shortages at the moment. So we've used some plain flour and a teaspoon of baking powder. We've got some golden caster sugar there. We have some butter. We've got some milk. We've got a tin of bog standard peach slices. And I'm gonna serve this with a little bit of creme fraiche in a while. Um, what we have here is we have a bowl with uh, a mix of butter and sugar in there that we've actually creamed. Now I did this with the wooden spoon. Um, quite easy to do, it's a bit time consuming. But you could do it with one of these. Um, but obviously everybody hasn't got one of those, so that's why I thought I would just do it with the, uh, the wooden spoon. We've also got here a pre-greased um, microwave safe bowl, which um, we've just put a little bit of butter in there to hopefully stop it from sticking to the sides. All right, so, cream method. That's nice and smooth now. And now what we're gonna do is, we're going to put one egg in there. We'll just crack that in. There we go. And we're going to put half the flour in as well. Approximately half the flour. Half the flour and baking powder mix. And then we're just going to give that another mix through. Just take your time. You don't want flour and egg everywhere. All over the kitchen. Or Auntie Sandra will not be pleased. There we go. Nearly there. Gets easier when you add the second bit. All right, so we will now put in the second egg. Two eggs for this one. There we are. And the rest of the flour. Clive, while I do this and mix this in, can you just give a bit of a focus on that recipe there? On the, uh, the black notice board. Just so if anybody wants to write down what we've actually got. Uh, baking is more of a science than what we usually do. So you actually need to have the uh, ingredients weighed out. That's coming along nicely now, rather than what we usually do, which is uh, just throw everything in. Okay, so, right, now that, I'm sure you don't need to tell me, it's far, you didn't need me to tell you even, new teeth required, uh, it's far too thick. So we're just gonna put a little splash of milk in there. I know it says on the board four tablespoons, I think, but 
flower is, and I'll probably get this wrong, it's hy hygroscopic, something like that. And what it does is it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere. Now it hasn't rained for two weeks here, so the flower is very dry. Therefore, we're probably gonna have to add more liquid or more milk. That's still far too stiff. So we're just gonna put some more milk in there. Oh my God. Remember, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. So just keep adding little bits at a time and mixing it through. How do you know when it's the correct thickness and ready to put in the microwave? Ah, here you ask. Well, we've got a little method that we call the elephant method. And I'm just gonna show you right now. Clive, if you just wanna bob back over there. Excellent stuff. So what we do is we take a spoon, we get some of the mixture out, we hold it up, we trip over the dog, and then we turn it and we count. But we didn't count that time, so I think we should probably count this time. All right, what we do is we count elephants. Here we go, you ready? One elephant, two elephant. Mm, it needs to be a swift two elephants though. We need a two elephant drop. I'm just gonna try that again, because I still think this is a little bit thick. You ready? One elephant, two elephant. Yeah, it's a little bit thick. All right, so what we'll do is, We'll put a little splash more milk in there, not too much. Although I will say that it probably is better being a little bit thinner than being a little bit thicker. Mix that through. There we are. You really are a pest, Daisy, aren't you? Okay. I didn't even know you like, oh yeah, you do like everything. Cake. This is the only dog in the world that will eat lemons. Right, uh, test her again, there we go, let's see if we can get to two elephants, but we go, ready, one elephant, two, Ooh, yeah, nearly there, I think that's, that might be a bit, bit of a swift two elephants, let's have a look, go again, here we are, one elephant, two elephant, yeah, you see, it stuck a little bit more that time, didn't it, I think it's because when I get the spoon out of there, it's got water on it, so it's slipping off. Because I still think, from experience, that this this mix is just a little bit too thick. So let's have another go. One elephant, two elephants. Nah, it's too thick. All right. So let's put that in with the peaches. I don't think that's going to get any harm in the peaches. A little bit more. There we are. How are we going to get there this time? Take your time. Yeah. yeah, that's looking much better. Mix that thoroughly through. Nice and smooth. And back to the elephants. There we go. Ready? One elephant, two elephants. I think I started too early though. Let's go again. All right, here we go. Not that one. One elephant, two elephants. Not too thick. Is this making good TV? Okay. Watching me. Adding milk, whipping this round and counting elephants. And we are. This is it, this is it. Confident this time, confident, confident. Here we go, here we go. There we are. That's it. Good mood. Right, here we go. Three hours later. Here we are. Oh, this is it, this is it. I can tell, I can tell. Ready? One elephant, two elephants. Test it again. One elephant, two elephants. That's the one. Okay. So. Peaches into the bottom of the oven-proof dish. Like so. Flatten them out. Mix on top. It should spread itself out nice and evenly. There we are. Daisy's now hoping that she's gonna get the, the 
ball to lick. Bad news, you're not. There we are. Get rid of this. And all we need to do to flatten it out really is to just give it a little bang. Just like so. All right, so we have got a timer on the microwave, but I'm not entirely convinced that it's that accurate. So we're going to pop it in. It's on full power. Cling film lightly over the top of it. Just like, oh, maybe do that before I put it in. Cling film lightly over the top, just like that. There we go. Timer on phone. Close door. Start timer. Done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, even though that's only gonna be in there for three and a half minutes, it's also got to rest for a couple of minutes. So we're gonna do like we did yesterday, because Clive's got this nice gizmo now that fades in and fades out. So we'll see you in, I don't know, five, six minutes, something like that. Welcome back everybody. Uh, the microwave has done its thing and also we rested it for a couple of minutes as well. Now, uh, we put it in for three and a half minutes and uh, when we brought it out, we didn't think it was cooked. I'll show you how we're gonna test uh, to see if it's cooked in a second. And if you're using these quantities, then perhaps you might want to double up the time in the microwave, but of course it does depend on what strength your microwave is as well. So let's get it out and have a look. And what we can do to test to see if it's ready is we can do the skewer test. So you can use a fork or a knife for if you've got one of these nice skewers, you can use one of those. And we're just going to poke it into the centre. And if it comes out clean, yeah, it's clean-ish. It's not great. Let's just test around the outside. Sometimes the middle's a little bit less done. Yeah, it's clean around the outside, so it's it's getting that balance there between having the centre cooked and the outside cooked. To be honest with you, most people would eat sponge mix uncooked out of a bowl. Bitey certainly would. So, in real terms, uh, everything tastes good with custard is the saying, although today we're actually going to um, serve it with some creme fraiche. You could of course serve it with custard or ice cream or cream or anything you like, to be perfectly honest. So, let's see if we can get a portion out. Here we are. There we go. Nice big portion. You can see that's still quite wet. And a little spoon of creme fraiche. little spoon there and there we have it microwave sponge pudding money shot Clive okay that's a big shot out from the shot cook please subscribe um, if anyone's got any t-shirts as I said please send them in because I'm gonna run out of two balls at some point um, stay safe and uh, enjoy.